Hey guys, Micah here. Hey, we've all been there, right? We're reading the Bible and we look at something and we go, what did I just read? I don't understand what I just read. And I want to give you three ways, uh, three helpful tools to figure stuff out when you're reading the Bible and you're confused. All right. So the first tool that I love to recommend to people is uh, the Read Scripture series on YouTube. And so it is... Um, really stellar. They've got these for every single book of the Bible, and all of them are good. So it's, um, you know, it goes through and it says, link this book you know, here's the author, here's the context, here's the big picture, right here's, what the, expect God to... here's what the person's trying to accomplish. Uh, goes through and gives, shows the outline of the book, and, uh, and then by the end, uh, let's see if I can get a complete thing here. Uh, by the end, it just says, this is what's going on, and here's the whole book. Here's what's going on with it. And so it's really a fascinating tool. And I tell you what, I've got a uh, Master of Divinity degree. I've read the Bible my whole life, and every time I watch one of these videos for the first time, I go, wow, I did not know that. So I've learned something, and at the same time, my kids, uh, a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old, and both of them, when they have a question, I go, well, let's watch one of the videos, and they get it. So my very first uh, go-to tool for figuring out kind of the 30,000 foot view of a book, what's going on at the big picture, uh, I always go first to uh, the Read Scripture series on YouTube. It's available, it's free, it's easy. Second thing I do is uh, I get one of these. So this is a, uh, a Bible handbook. There are several great Bible handbooks out there. Uh, I'm not so much endorsing this particular one, although it is good. Uh, it's just that I bought it on sale. I bought like cases and cases of these on sale. Uh, I've still got a couple left if you want one. Uh, several years ago when it was $5 per. So right now, CBD, uh, christianbook.com has, uh, has it for $13.99. I don't know that I'd spend 14 bucks on it, but, uh, right now they've got the Holman Christian illustrated Bible handbook for, uh, for $5. There are, or if you're an Amazon person, uh, uh, there are a ton of good Bible handbooks out there. I'm not endorsing one in particular. Haley's is great. Holman is great. Zondervan is great. Uh, they're all good. And what that is, it's kind of like a study Bible without the Bible. All right. So it just, it's a, it's a single book commentary on the whole Bible. Uh, when I was getting ready to go to seminary or no, when I was going to college, um, decided not to go to Bible college. My dad told me, he said, look, get yourself one of these. He, I think he gave me Haley's. I had an old blue Haley's previous edition. And he said, get you one of those and, uh, read it. And it's worth like a year of seminary. So I was like, okay. So I did that. It was really amazing how much stuff is packed into one of these books. So uh, so it's definitely worth it. That's the second tool I go to when I'm reading something. I go, what is that? I always look and see if there's something in here. And the third tool, and this is really what I want to spend time talking about, is this great online resource called Lumina. And Lumina is a uh, part of Bible.org. It is fantastic. And it is all it all exists just for free. You don't pay for it. You don't sign up or anything. Uh, just for you to be able to find great information about the Bible. So let me show you three things you can do on Lumina. Uh, three and a half. So the first thing, um, you know, I always get a little bit annoyed when preachers, including myself, uh, say things about like, oh, well, you know, in the Greek it says this. And, and uh, my, what really annoys me is what they're like, you know what it really means in the Greek? Well, what it really means is whatever it says. That's why they translated it that way. Bible translators probably know more about Greek than you do. But a lot of times you go, well, I wish I knew, had some idea of what was going on. So uh, so I was I was actually just over here. I was looking at uh, Mark 1, 14, and there's this great verse. It says, the time uh, after John is in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaimed the gospel of God, the gospel of God. He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is near. And I was curious about that word time. I was like, huh, I mean... Time. What, what about time is fulfilled? So if you look here, if you go to lumina.bible.org, you know, and I put in Mark, 10, uh, Mark 1, um, if you click here on Greek, what happens is it gives you, this is called a diglot perspective. Uh, it gives you a uh, the English on the left and the Greek on the right. And if, as you mouse over things, it'll show you what the Greek word is. So I know you probably didn't take Greek uh, in college or master's degree or anything like that. Uh, I did, but I forgot it all. So, you know, it's fine. But uh, what you can do is you can say, well, the time is fulfilled. Look at that time. And over here, I'm pointing because if I move my mouse, you won't see it. Uh, you see this. That's actually an R there. So it's Kairos uh, is, is what shows up. And then down at the bottom, if you see as I'm moving my mouse around, different things happen. If I hear down at the bottom, it gives a quick and dirty definition of, of Kairos, do measure, the measure of time, fixed and definite time, when things are brought to crisis, opportune or seasonable time, the right time. It's like, well, that's interesting. But there's this great thing. If I left click here and click on this, uh, this little search function, I can do what's called a word study. And I look at the word study and it says, 
hey, look, this is the word that's used, and here's how it's used. So I can go through and go, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom is near, repent and believe the gospel. Uh, and then it gives all this stuff. So this is really useful. A lot of times when I go, I wonder what the what the Greek, I mean, I know it wasn't written in English originally. I wonder what the Greek word is. But there's one more thing that uh, is really great about this, is if I go back over here and I say the time, I can do what's called a Strong's search. Now, you don't care um, about this too much, but there's this great, uh, started in the 1800s, they, they went through and, and tagged every word in the Bible with a number and to see you know, which words were used when. And so if you search, do a strong search, it doesn't just give you, uh, like if you go to Bible Gateway or whatever your favorite tool is and you search for time, it'll say, here's all the times, here's all the times, here's all the instances in the NIV where it says time. What a strong search gives you is it can go by uh, the actual Greek word that gets translated as time. And so uh, I just searched for all of those instances and look what happens. So sometimes it says time, right? But then others, Ephesians 5.16, taking the advantage of every opportunity because the days are evil. It's actually saying taking advantage of every kairos, right? Uh, Colossians 4.5, he says something very similar. Uh, First Titus, revealing God's purpose at his appointed time. That's that kairos idea. Um, there are different difficult times ahead. I heard you at the accepted time. My time is not, my kairos has not yet arrived, but you are ready at any kairos. Uh, so these are the things that... Um, that a strong search gives you is it gives you much better searching capability than just searching in the English, right? Because there's a couple of different Greek words that get translated as time. If I'm only looking for this one, uh, what does it show me? So there's, there's all kinds of things you can do with that. So um, the last thing that I really love about Lumina, and this is actually probably should have been the first thing, but I was focused on this other. Uh, the thing that I use the most for Lumina is I use their translation notes. So uh, Lumina uses the New English Translation, which is my favorite study translation. And part of what makes it my favorite is that uh, the translators included like 80,000 translators' notes. And they said, this is why we translated it in this way. So if you have a hard copy of the New English Translation, or at least some editions of it, it'll have all those notes like on the bottom half of, the, of each page. So, uh, so here you can see there's different notes all the way through. So after John was imprisoned, uh, so some of them are just real simple, you know, taken into custody, blah, blah, blah. Uh, others uh, talk about textual differences. Okay, well, this one versus this one, fine. Others uh, get really deep into the grammar. It's like the genitive in the phrase, blah, 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 that cannot be translated as a subjective genitive. Man, I just skipped that. If you're a grammar person, then you're a better person than me. But um, but I, I'm fascinated by, like, every once in a while, you get, uh, you get something like this. Like in verse 17, follow me, Jesus says, and I will turn you into fishers of people. Fishers of men in the translation I grew up with. Uh, it says, the Greek term is used in the generic sense, referring to both men and women, thus people. But then it has this little note here. It says, this kind of, the kind of fishing envisioned was net, not line fishing. So when I think fishing, I think going out with my grandpa, put the, put the hook in the water, reel it in, wait for the bobber to bob. That's not what they're doing. They've got the big circular net with heavy weights around the perimeter. The occupation of fishermen was labor intensive. The imagery of using a lure and a line waiting for the fish to strike is foreign to this text. Rather, the imagery is of fishermen involved in much strain, long hours, and little results. <laughs> that's, that's what Jesus is saying. He's like, hey, uh, this point may have been one, one or more of the following. The strenuousness of it, the work ethic required, the persistence and dedication, the infinite value of the new catch, and perhaps an eschatological theme of snatching people from judgment. It's like, I'd never thought of that until I'd read this note. And then it says this, if the last motif is in view, catching people is the opposite of catching fish. Catching people is the opposite of catching fish. The fish would be caught, killed, cooked, and eaten. People would be caught so as to remove them from eternal destruction and give them new life. And I think, that is a whole lot of stuff that I have never thought about for one little, one little phrase, fishers of people, fishers of men. So anytime I'm getting ready to teach or preach on a passage or anything, time I just read a passage and I go, what? What is going on here? I always go to Lumina and I just scan the notes. And it doesn't always help. Um, sometimes the question I have isn't really covered. But frequently it is. Pretty frequently. Uh, I'd be surprised how often it is. So those are my three tools that I really recommend. One, uh, get you some free YouTube and uh, look up. Get a 30,000 foot view anytime you're wondering about something. Like just... Just back up and get, here's the context of it. Here's what's going on in this passage. Here's how it fits into the rest of the book. The second thing I'd say is get yourself a Bible handbook. Um, if this still, sale is still on, you can use this. Otherwise, I'm all about the Amazon. And uh, just pick up something. Uh, any one of those three is a great one. And, and you know, 
this one's good. It's down the down the list of ways. And uh, and the last is use Lumina. All right, use Lumina and check out um, check out the notes feature and the word search feature. And so those are both really really useful tools or parts of a tool called Lumina. And those three things together. Uh, it's not going to answer every question, but it'll sure steer you so you'll be well equipped to figure out what's actually going on. So that's it. Uh, read your Bible. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. Bye.